Hi guys, it's Lori from Home Right. Today's video is all about Jerusalem artichokes. This video is going to be a little bit of tag teaming between Keith and I in the video. Some of it's done by me and some of it's done by Keith. So we ordered Jerusalem artichokes online. We are just spacing them out on how we want to put these in grow bags. These are 15 gallon grow bags. And since we have 10, we took three in this one, three in the middle, and four of the smaller ones in the backpack. So what we're gonna do is just dig down about six inches, add a little bit of compost, and then just put the Jerusalem artichoke on top. Cover it back up. Yep. We're just adding a top layer of leaf mulch. Then giving these guys a really good soak because the dirt was a little bit on the dry side. So we definitely want to make sure these get a good soak. It is June 24th and we are just starting to see little sprouts of the Jerusalem artichokes. Do you see them right there? Just starting to peek through. And then another one right there. And over here, we got one right there, right there, and then another one sneaking in right there. And none yet, although I am starting to see, I think it might be popping through here. But this uh, grow bag has a little bit more shade because of the grape vines that are here. So I suspect that one will pop up in a couple of days. But that's awesome. They're already starting to pop through. It is July 17th, and here's a quick update on the Jerusalem artichokes. They are looking really, really good. You can actually see in the bottom of the pot, we actually added in a little bit of bird netting. The only reason why we did that is just to keep the squirrels from digging in the pots. And I cannot wait to see what happens with these guys. These three right here are called Jerusalem artichokes or sunchokes. Supposedly, we're supposed to get a flower at the top of them. Kind of looks like a little tiny sunflower, but I haven't seen that yet. But I'm real excited about these guys to see what happens with them. So something else to note about these Jerusalem artichokes, there really was no maintenance to them. They were on an automatic drip system, so they were getting good regular watering, but we really didn't go ahead and add any additional fertilizers. Once in a while, Keith may have gone around the garden and added some fish fertilizer, but other than that, they were low maintenance. We really didn't do much with them. And really, there were no pests that seemed to go after these. So, like I said, these were really low maintenance. They look like they've gotten a little bit of frost, going, frost damage going on those leaves. That's okay. These guys are getting close to harvesting anyways. Okay, so we've already covered how we planted them and what they look like over the summer. Now let's get into harvesting them and replanting the Jerusalem artichokes. Obviously, these Jerusalem artichokes, sunchokes, they've definitely died off. We've had them here for probably in this state for about the last 30 days or so, and they're perfectly fine to store in the dirt. What we're gonna do now is we'll harvest what we want and then we'll prep for next year's planting in some new containers. So finally, after two years, we lost our first grow bag here, but all in all, we're still real pleased using grow bags. And if I only lose one or two a year, I'm perfectly fine with that. One 
bags we've been grabbing some from. So I'm not exactly sure which one that was. We found a lot of grubs in this grow bag. This is not what we want to find in our dirt. After you've harvested these, keep in mind they do not store very well. So you really need to process them as quick as possible or leave them in the grow bags and harvest them as you need them. You just kind of got to be careful that they don't rot out. That was the only thing that we had to keep an eye on. All in all, I think we did pretty good with our sunchokes. We started off with a 10 of these sunchokes that were probably about this size. I do think one of them may have rotted out, so we really may have only had nine. So I'm going to go ahead and weigh these to see how much we actually have. Eleven point six pounds. So we went ahead and picked nine of these that we will actually go ahead and replant. We did double check these in order to make sure we don't have any rotting going on with them. But we will go ahead and replant them. So now that we've finally taken care of these sun chokes, it's time for us, I mean, just harvest them. And now we want to overwinter them and prepare them for next spring season. So we've got our grow bags, 15 gallon grow bags filled with dirt. We got some all purpose fertilizer in them. And then we're just going to take three of these sun chokes for each one of the bags. Just simply bury them down a couple inches or so. And then we'll cover that with a little bit of leaf mulch. Not to go too crazy with the leaf mulch. Just get a layer, it's probably about a quarter inch. And then reused window blinds. Ah. We'll just write sun choke. That circle number represents how many we put in and the date we put it in. From here, we'll go put them underneath our little pop-up tunnel and store them there for the winter. We'll keep these here until spring. We'll keep these open just like we got. You can see over there, we got the turmeric, we got the ginger. We do the same thing here with the sun chokes. I just like doing this because we can control the water, in my opinion, versus like for tonight, for example, we're supposed to get two to four inches of rain. I really don't want these bags to get that soaked. So by storing them under here, I think it's a safer environment. Come March or April, we'll take them out of the tunnel and just let them start growing outside. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you got any questions or suggestions, please put them down in the comment section below, and we'll see you on the next video.